Hello, I'm Carol Walton, President and CEO of the Parkinson Alliance. As part of our patient-centered outcomes research work at the Parkinson Alliance, we would like to review the results of our last survey, Managing Day-to-Day -day Stress and Resilience with Parkinson's Disease. In today's world with COVID-19 and the pandemic, there are very challenging times for people with Parkinson's disease and all of us, and we felt this was a very timely topic. I'm here today with Dr. Jeffrey Wertheimer, who is the Chief Research Consultant for the Parkinson Alliance, and also Chief of Neuropsychology Services at Cedar sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles. Dr. Wertheimer assists us in putting all of our surveys together analyzing the data, and also writing the manuscripts. So Dr. Wertheimer, before we start talking about the results, would you tell RPR community how we outline our research projects? Absolutely, Carol, and thanks for the opportunity to speak with you today as well. So as a primary vehicle to educate in the Parkinson's community, we have four core sections to our research reports. Uh, the first is a summary of previous research to help provide a context and foundation to the reports. The second is our description of our research approach or our methodology and the results. And then the third is to provide a summary of our findings. And lastly, to provide recommendations that are specifically related to the topic at hand. Excellent. What were the real objectives of this particular research project? Carol, as we often strive to help with the Parkinson's community and certainly connect with them, one of our main overarching objectives is to gain the perspectives of the individual with Parkinson's or the individuals with Parkinson's disease. So the core, the, the core objectives of the current report, we're looking at how individuals with Parkinson's perceive current stressors, to understand their perspectives on resilience and coping, and lastly, to provide general comments about and recommendations pertaining to fostering a sense of resilience and engaging in healthy coping behaviors. So let's talk about what some of these common stressors are for the people that participated. And I'd also like you to expand upon the word stressor because I know there are different kinds of stress for people. Yeah, I know it seems silly today to define stress, but I do think it's important. I think all of us can appreciate on some level that stress is ubiquitous, stress is commonplace for all of us. What may be helpful from a definition standpoint is think about stress this way. Uh, stress is related to events or uh, conditions in our surroundings that may trigger a sense of stress for ourselves. Stress can be both short-term, which we call acute stress, or could be chronic stress, which is long-term stress, meaning stress that's endured for greater than a month, greater than three months, greater than six months. And the top stressors in our particular research study included both acute and chronic stressors. So the top three were having Parkinson's disease, which of course can be chronic by its condition, but also have acute related factors to that experience. Experiencing functional difficulties, both as it relates to Parkinson's and also independent of symptoms of Parkinson's disease. And lastly, and not surprisingly, individuals were discussing the COVID-related stressors that were showing up for them in day-to-day -day experiences. And I also like to just kind of comment that there are numerous stressors out there, as many of us can appreciate, and other stressors that were reported in our particular study included relationship stressors with spouse, family members, even friends, and of course, financial stressors and home-related stress more generally. There's been enough stress in our life, and now we add COVID on top of it. Yeah. So let's talk about resilience, and I'd like you to define resilience and then talk about what some of the results were from our participants. And while we may read about different definitions of resilience, a common definition is one's ability to bounce back or recover from stress or adversity, to adapt to stressful circumstances, and to function the best way we can in spite of that stress or adversity. So now that we've talked about stress, <laughs> and resilience, let's talk about some of the coping strategies. How are people able to deal with this? Mm. Carol, as it relates to Parkinson's disease specifically, there's been some great research to date that's highlighted some core strategies that have been helpful for people with Parkinson's. So ones that have been described in the research thus far are having a proactive approach 
to seeking education as a self-empowerment method, if you will. Another one is social connections, which, Carol, as we know, has really been challenged in this last year, uh, year plus, because of the, the limited access to individuals due to the pandemic. But we still know that social support is a key element to coping behaviors. Other ones include stress-related uh, management related to exercising, engaging in meditation or mindfulness moments. And then a core element is that adaptive thinking. How are we choosing to manage our perspective in the face of stress? And lastly, a topic that's been brought out is spiritual resilience, finding meaning and purpose in life and being able to connect to something greater than ourselves, maybe through religion or through connecting to nature were examples in the lecture. I think when you talk about social connections, I think when this whole thing started, it was okay to do a Zoom class and maybe take a rock steady boxing class over Zoom. I think we've really stretched that definition of social connection now and they're ready to go back and, and to be in person. At the end of each of our research reports, Dr. Wertheimer, we always try and leave people with take home points. So they have some place to go for recommendations. They know what to do with some of this data. Can you address some of those take home points, please? Yeah, and I know there were many take home points in our particular report, but a few would be this. You know, not surprisingly, again, stress was highly prevalent. And importantly, it was the perception of stress that had the greatest impact on health and well being. Uh, just statistically speaking, there were approximately 65% in our particular research that reported stress as at least moderate severity. And this is interesting, Carol, despite high rates of stress, people also reported that they see themselves as resilient as well. Almost up to 70% of participants said that at some level they see a sense of resilience for themselves. And then other, maybe a couple core take home points were how are people coping? Uh, the top five most frequently reported coping techniques included connecting with friends and family, using distraction techniques, engaging in physical exercise, managing attitude, and connecting with nature. And an important take-home point, I believe, in our research was the strongest coping predictor to perceive resilience was managing that perspective, either internally, how do we manage our perspective through our own resources, or using external resources like psychotherapy or spiritual connections. And religious affiliations, the community, et cetera. Interesting. Dr. Wertheimer, as a neuropsychologist, you see people with Parkinson's every single day. If I ask you for just one or two recommendations on either how you would tell someone to help in managing the stress or how to foster a sense of resilience. Yeah, I'll preface with this, Carol. It's, there's so many coping techniques that it's important to know what coping behaviors work for you. So tailoring the coping technique to yourself is a very important point. But to say it simply, exercise, gosh, as we talked many a times, Carol, for the Parkinson's community, exercise is really important. And beyond the Parkinson's community, teaching your mind that your body matters is very important to our general sense of resilience. Seeking resources, such as mental health professionals, to help with resilience can be certainly supportive uh, in our ability to adapt and cope. And I'll highlight two other ones briefly. One is supporting our emotional perspective, is acknowledging and validating the stress, but then taking action on how to manage that, such as managing perspective. And I'll, I'll conclude with this. One of my favorite quotes is from Dick, Dr. Viktor Frankl. He's a psychiatrist who lived through the Holocaust and his credibility in this next comment. He stated, everything can be taken from a man but one thing, the last of the human freedoms to choose one's attitude in any given set of circumstances, to choose one's own way. How inspiring to be able to say, despite our challenging moments, I still have the ability to choose my response to that challenge. Excellent. You know, you talk about the importance of educating yourself and by educating yourself, you empower yourself. So I would like to direct people to our website for not only the complete report on managing stress and resilience. There are 34 other reports that we help will educate people and empower them more. So please go to our website, parkinsonalliance.org, and double click on research and resources. And thank you very much.